who is accompanied by her officials, uh, Ms Michelle Shannon, Director of the Irish Youth Just Justice Service, Ms Noreen Leahy, Principal Officer, and Mr Tony O'Donovan, Child Welfare Officer. You're all very welcome this evening. I also welcome members and viewers who may be watching the proceedings on Oireachtas TV and to the, public, to the public session of the Joint Oireachtas Committee on Children and Youth Affairs. Members are reminded of the long-standing parliamentary practice to the effect that members should not comment on, criticise nor make charges against a person outside the House in, uh, or an official, either by name or in a way as to make him, her or it identifiable. May I also remind members and witnesses, and indeed our guest, to please turn off their mobile phones as, uh, and, or switch them into flight mode as they will interfere with our sound system and make it difficult for parliamentary reporters to report the meeting. Television coverage and web streaming may also be adversely affected. I also wish to advise the Minister that any submission or opening statement that you have made to the Committee will be published on the Committee website after this meeting. After your presentation, there will be questions from the members of the Committee, and indeed I now call on you, Minister, to make your opening statement, please. Okay, thank you, Chairman, members of the Joint Committee, uh, for inviting me back here today to discuss the issue of Oberstown and the operational review. When I spoke to you in relation to Oberstown on the 24th of January 2018, I was pleased to note the positive changes which were becoming evident at that time. I am pleased to say that there appears to be a continuing improvement in the operations of the campus. Indeed, I would go so far as to say that Oberstown at the end of 2018 is a different place to what it was in December of 2016. This has indeed been supported by the implementation of the recommendations of the various reviews, including the operational review recommendations which have been implemented in the past one to two years. Committee members will be aware that I established a review implementation group in March of 2017 to oversee all the various recommendations of these reports, including the recommendations of the operational review. The group produced a coherent plan to implement all of the recommendations. Their action plan, which was completed in May of 2018, was published on my department's website at that time. There is real evidence of positive change in the day-to-day -day operations of Oberstown. I have seen it myself. I know it through meeting the children, the staff, the management, and the board of Oberstown. It is not just me who believes this. This change is most recently reflected in HICWA's report of their inspections into the campus. HICWA is authorized by me under the Children Act 2001 to undertake inspections of Oberstown Children Detention Campus. The chair of the board of management of Oberstown invited HICWA to read the operational review report for their most recent unannounced inspection. This was carried out from the 7th to the 13th of March 2018. The subsequent HICWA report of this inspection, which was published on the 9th of October 2018, acknowledges that Having undergone major chain over the past, change over the past few years, the campus is now enjoying a period of relative stability. Overall, the inspection found that where the focus of campus management and resources had been applied to address identified issues within the campus, improvements are evident. The HICWA inspection report highlights that many of the recommendations identified by the review implementation group were implemented in full and work on the remainder was underway at the time of the inspection. My department continues to monitor the review implementation group and the second report on the implementation of the recommendations will issue shortly. The operational review was car carried out following a particularly difficult time in Oberstown. There had been serious incidents, some of which were well publicized involving young people which threatened the safety of the center. The campus had been experiencing extraordinary difficulties in 2016. There were severe industrial relations issues. There were also challenges with the structural redevelopment of the campus. There was a difficult change process following the amalgamation of three well-established autonomous schools. These difficulties are well documented and were well known at the time. At this time, some under 18s were still detained in St. Patrick's Institution and it was agreed that they would in time be detained in Oberstown. And while this was a very positive development and the one that was welcomed warmly in the Oireachtas and beyond, 
it undoubtedly created anxiety for staff and children alike as the operational environment in Oberstown faced many changes. Unlike many other detention facilities in other jurisdictions which operate more like prisons, the campus is based on a care ethos in a secure setting. But it, this is a relatively unique, but it is an important approach. My visit last week has reinforced my confidence in how Oberstown is delivering care and support for the children who are being detained there. While the detention of any child is regrettable, the current atmosphere and operational structures in Oberstown are focused on providing the best environment for children that we can attain. I was, as always, impressed by the dedication and commitment of the staff and board of Oberstown to ensuring that the operation of the campus focuses on what's best for children who spend time there. Last week I experienced a significantly more stable campus than which existed in September of 2016 when the Oberstown Board of Management commissioned an external independent review of operations and best practice at the campus. The review was undertaken by two international experts in this field, Professor Barry Goldson and Professor Nicholas Hardwick. The terms of reference agreed for the review stated that the aims of the review are, firstly, to evaluate practice and policy in line with international standards and best practice. Secondly, to identify obstacles or barriers to achieving greater implementation of international standards and best practice. And thirdly, to make recommendations to ensure greater and more successful implementation of these standards. The board received the outcome of the review in February of 2017. The board's immediate concerns in relation to the review were that it went outside the terms of reference which the board had developed did not demonstrate any process of verifying the accuracy of its claims, and fair procedures were not adhered to in regard to persons referred to in the review. When I was last here, I advised the committee that the Board of Management of Overstown had decided that it was not safe to publish the report of that review. This decision was based on a careful and lengthy process of deliberation, including the commissioning of independent legal advice. I also told the committee there were several requests for its publication. I sought legal advice on the matter and the issue was the subject of detailed consideration and discussion involving the chair of the board of Oberstown and my department. On foot of the legal advice that I received, I asked the chair of the board of management to confirm that fair procedures had been observed in advance of any decision to publish the report. At that time, we were still awaiting the chair's final response on this matter. I advise the committee that further legal advice may have been required to ensure that fair procedures were adhered to. I further advise the committee that I would decide whether the report could be released or not based on the chair's response and any further legal advice that would be received. I also made clear that the board had carefully reviewed each recommendation made in the report and published those recommendations together with the board's response in July of 2017. The publication of the recommendations ensured that the supportive and developmental aims of the review were met. I wish to emphasize that my department's focus and that of Oberstown Children Detention Campus is on the implementation of the recommendations so as to ensure that there is a safe and stable environment in Oberstown which is responsive to the needs of the children detained there by the children's courts and for the staff who work there. I have been advised by the board that the decision not to publish the report of the operational review was not one that it either expected or wanted to make. It resulted from a lengthy, careful, and extensive process of consideration which weighed up in light of the independent legal advice the legal risks associated with the publication. The board had always intended to publish the report and in taking its decisions not to publish it was exceptionally mindful of the importance of ensuring transparency and accountability in their operation. I have been advised by the board that their aim in commissioning the operational review was specifically to understand how to retain the care ethos within a secure setting. The review was explicitly intended to be a supportive and developmental process constructed to enable the campus to move on. And integral to this process was feedback to the board, management of the campus and staff. I am advised by the chairperson that this feedback did not happen. In addition, the findings of the report were never put to the board. 
the management of the campus or its staff for their response. This is the fundamental problem and provides the context for the legal risks associated with publication. It goes without saying that we always, in the legal context, have to ensure that any legal risks presented by publication of reports of this kind are very carefully weighed in the balance. This was what happened in this case. A careful process of consideration of the risks indicated in independent legal advice received brought the board regrettably to the conclusion that the risks of the publication of the report were too great. So having been advised by the board of their decision, I then sought the advice of the Attorney General, who advised me that publication of the report was fraught with legal risk. In light of the risks based on the legal advice received, I gave the matter careful consideration. And in July of 2018, I concluded that it's not appropriate to publish the full report. It is imperative that a report of this kind should observe due process and fair procedures so that all persons referred to are treated appropriately. Where a person is the subject of proposed criticism, he or she is entitled to fair procedures. Following careful examination, the board was not in a position to satisfy itself or me that fair procedures had been applied before the report was finalized and submitted. My officials recently raised the question of the publication of a redacted version of the report with the chair of the board. However, I am advised that the board considered that there were serious flaws that could not be remedied at this stage and that redaction of the report was not feasible. The board has further advised me that the reviewers have requested a copy of the board's independent legal advice before redactions can be made. In other words, while the reviewers offered to make redactions, they have always insisted that they would only make them once they saw the legal advice. The board remains of the view that the report uh, cannot be published. In reaching the conclusion not to publish the report, the board and myself acted with due diligence, prudence, and care to all of the parties affected and with regard, as is our responsibility, to what is in the best interest of the Oberstown Children Detention Campus as a whole, including the best interests of the children under our care there. The recommendations of the report, all of which are at the kernel of how we move forward to make Oberstown a safer place for young people and staff, are being implemented as part of a significant package of reform in Oberstown, which is now well underway. The implementation of these recommendations has been my key priority to bring about improvements in standards. My department is supporting and, where appropriate, monitoring the changes necessary to ensure that international standards and best practice are observed and to identify any addre and address any barriers or challenges to maintaining the ethos of care. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Minister. Um, before I open um, the questions to uh, Deputy Mitchell, who has indicated first, I, I only have one question in relation to your to your statement, um, and I thank you very much for making it. Um, and that is, to your knowledge, did the Board of Oberstown approach the reviewers and request that they review their uh, report in order to ensure that it complied with the terms of reference that were put? to it originally, i.e. a revised report, rather than something that they didn't request. Just ask that again, please, Chair. Yes. Please thank the so the, did the board request the reviewers to produce a report in line with the terms of reference provided to the reviewers in the first instance after this, doc, this public, this report was provided to Oberstown? Given can the, we just sorry? Can please, we just take that first part? Yes, You're asking me, did the board ask the reviewers to produce to give them a report in line with the terms of reference? Yes. After the, the this this public this document was pub, uh, provided to, to them, after this report was provided to them. In other words, did they go back and say, as you have indicated, that it's outside the terms of reference, that there are questions over the. Uh, what was it that you referred to it as? I don't know the answer to that question. There are questions as to the, the verification to of accuracy. I don't know the answer to that question. What I would say, though, is so we can, I can find that out. But what I would say is that, um, you know, terms of reference were agreed. Yes. And as is usually the case, and when terms of reference are agreed, a report is written according to the terms of reference. So I just, I, but I don't, I don't explicitly know the answer to that okay. question. No, no, I, I appreciate don't know that. that. Thank you. Okay. 
Am I only the question, Minister, then? Are you aware as to the cost of the production of this report? You mean to actually publish it? No. To the production of the report. So the, the, the fees associated with the reviewers. Again, I don't have the... Okay. I don't have the specific answer to that question at hand. Okay. But we'll ask no doubt we have that information, Chair, yeah. if you would like to have that. I would. Sorry? We did answer it in the yeah. PQ. You You've answered it. Re recently. Well, exactly. we, we, we can get that. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Minister. You. Uh -huh. I now uh, offer uh, Deputy Mitchell, please. Uh, thanks, Chair uh, Thanks, Minister, for coming in today. Uh, Minister, I just want to start by saying that there has clearly been improvements in, um, from the uh, last HICWA report regarding Obertstown. But there's still some concerns in around Obertstown from that report, uh, the last HICWA report. Like they're still saying that there's 10 standards in the campus that is uh, still to be found moderately non-compliant. And in five of these areas, they include the care of children, planning for children, uh, premises safety and security, dealing with offending behaviour, and finally, staff and, and management issues. So while we acknowledge this good stuff going on, there's still more to be done. And particularly in around um, one of the big concerns we had when we, we had you in here the last time was on uh, single separation. And at the last HICWA report, it's still saying that it was used 1,700 times in 2017. So I think that there is still a lot of work to be done in around that. So if I can get, get to wh wh why we're here today is regarding the withholding of the report. And I know that correspondence obtained under the Freedom of Information Act by RTE this week's programme shows that the chairperson of the board of Albertstown informed the Department of Children and Youth Affairs that the board would not publish the report because of legal risks. I think we're all agreed on that. Uh, it appears that the legal risks were because that members of the board were criticised in the report. So I just want to ask you, is that true? And I want to ask you, uh, Minister, do you honestly believe that withholding this report, which it appears to have done what it was supposed to do, by that I mean identify the problems at the campus, is in the best interests of the children detained there? So, if you can, um, yeah. then once okay, and then I can you. go back if that's okay, okay. Chair. Yeah. Um, thank you. Just in relation to your first point, uh, in terms of more to be done and uh, concerns around, uh, you know, um, things that need to be implemented in relation to the HICWA report, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's, that, that's why they do the reports. Mm -hmm. um, it is a, uh, always going to be a challenging environment given the nature of the work that is done there. Um, and so that's why it's important that there are ongoing, um, I suppose, inspections, um, reviews, um, a looks at the, the implementation of recommendations of, a pla of a many, many reviews, as we know. And that is all work that is going on. Uh, in terms of, for example, though, in terms of single separation itself, as you asked the question, a 56% uh, reduction in the incidences of single separation between 2016 and 2017, which were verified by HICWA, a further 22% reduction was achieved between 2017 and 2018. And overall, this amounts to 60% reduction okay. in single separation since 2016. So that's one of the aspects of the of work that is being done uh, and improvements that are being made. In terms of the question around legal risks that members of the board were criticized, the legal risks, as I have uh, outlined uh, and identified, were, are, are due to um, uh, a, a lack of fair procedures. The fair procedures involve, as I've already identified, is that in making certain statements, that those go back to uh, the people uh, in terms of the, both the campus as well as the board staff, et cetera, uh, to have a right of reply and on the basis of that to give back to reviewers and they take that into account in terms of prior to publication. That, as I, that it did not happen. That is, those are, that, is, that is the nature of the legal risks. All right, okay. So, Minister, you're and aware sorry, that... You asked me a question about in the best interest of the yeah, children. Yeah, do you think it's in the best interest of the children that, that's, that this report isn't published? Yes, I do. You do? I do. Right, okay. Yes, I do. So, you're saying 
You know that the, the authors have rejected the claims. That you, you, in a response last week, you said that uh, you didn't believe that fair procedure had been applied. Right? So the authors now have rejected that claim. On the basis of what? Uh, is they, the authors say they had. Uh, the authors say they had not been provided with any specific instances. Are you, are, you, are, you off, are you bringing that evidence into the committee, Chair? No, is I'm just... That, I'm, is that I'm, just something that happened? No, we're actually saying what they're saying. It was on the record of the minutes of, of last week, when we were in the Dáil Chamber, that the authors of the report had said... It was worth noting that the authors pointed out that throughout the entire process of preparing the final report for Obertown management, they were provided with opportunities to raise anything that they consider to be unfair or inaccurate before the final report was to be submitted. Do you want me to answer yeah. uh, what the authors said in yeah. absence? Well, well, if they're saying that there was opportunity... See, the problem we have here is the board uh -huh. is saying that it was unfair, the report was unfair. The authors are saying that they were given any opportunity to highlight where they felt the unfairness was. I think, as I understand it, and thank you, Deputy Mitchell, as I understand it, there was a lot of exchange over a long period of time, mm. back and forth, and actually, if, if, if you wish, I could read into the record. Of, I've got a couple of pages of a chronology here in terms of going back and forth. Um, um, but I think the nub of it, in terms of your question, is that uh, when the report was written and conclusions made, that at that point, so there was a lot of back and forth, mm. that at that point, that that work that was written and conclusions made, observations made, was not provided to my staff or officials, the board, the staff, to review and to give a, have a right of reply to. That point, at that point. At that point. Okay. And that is the nub of where the fair procedure okay. issue is, as right, I understand okay. it. Right, so is it okay if I ask just... Uh, one more, one another, more, and then Deputy Rabbit. Another, right, okay. Can I just... Yeah, like, we have time. I know the Minister yeah, is under hours. time pressure until 7. Yeah, please, okay. fire away. Can I, ju can I just ask you then about... Now, this was an article uh, dated from the 6th of August, right, where uh, the two professors were, were publicly talking about the report. Right, and they said that they believed it was deeply prob problematic that it wasn't published. They said, we have very grave concerns about what we learned, what individuals told us, and what we discovered during the operational review, and believe it would serve the public interest for our findings to be published. They also went on to this bit, and this is a bit that just concerns me, right? If our report had been published, it may have been in the interest to the courts and to the relevant sentencing of children's, children who were involved in the disputes. So I want to ask you, Minister, do you accept that the non-publication of this report may have impacted on the sentencing of the young people in uh, 2017 this year? Um, uh, the, first of all, just in relation to the comments, I, I know I, and I deeply respect um, the um, the views uh, of the um, okay, thank you. The views of the uh, the reviewers, um, and I uh, obviously met them myself in the process of that time. Um, so I, res I, I respect the views of, of the reviewers. I, I, I'm not in agreement with them, but I respect their views. Okay. Um, secondly, in terms of the question that you make, I this is. Um, this is what I believe, uh, that there is no basis for the suggestion that the report would have been of interest to the courts relevant to the sentencing of those involved. The courts are completely independent in the performance of their functions. And additionally, given that the relevant proceedings have not yet been concluded, such statements would risk interfering with an ongoing criminal matter. Okay. That's what I, I, I think. Mm -hmm. Mr. I wasn't aware that that matter was still ongoing, um, but obviously we have to tread carefully in mm -hmm. such matters, and, and I appreciate the response. Do, 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 yeah, no, that's fine. Final, that's okay. no, you're done? Yeah. Okay, thank you, Deputy thank Mitchell. You. Deputy Robert. Um, yes, um, thank you, Minister, for your, your, your opening statement there, and affording us the time to discuss this um, very serious issue. And 
I suppose really this was raised last week under um, questions, oral questions in, in, in the House and um, I suppose since then I've been doing a fair amount of research since and, and gone back in behind the bonnet of it and I suppose what I really want to understand is, and I said it last week, I said I felt I was working in the dark and the reason I say I feel I was working in the dark is that I have pages of recommendations there, okay, and then I want to know where those recommendations came from, as in what review did it come from? Because actually the recommendations are made up of, correct me if I'm wrong, in relation to five different feeding feeders into it. Okay? And out of that I would like to know, or is it possible for us to know what review recommended the various recommendations? Um, does that make sense? What came from the independent report? What came from HICWA? Where did you pull it all together from? So I'll give you an example I have here. So the action, all right, girls should no longer be placed in Oberstown, which is point number four. It's a recommendation. It sits there all on its own. And then it says the board is not in a position to address this matter, which falls under the remit of the Department of Children and Youth Affairs to consider as a matter of national law and policy. It has been referred to the department for its consideration by the review implementation team. So, who made that recommendation? That, that, that's one. Like, and I and I've numerous other ones that, like recommendation eight, I, I asked the same question. Recommendation eight is, visits should only be secured in cases where it's demonstrated necessary following a robust individual risk assessment which is actually contradicts recommendation 9. In accordance with the Orperstown policy, visits should never be stopped as a punishment. So I'm trying to feel, I feel there's con contradictions within some of the recommendations. And I think it's important for us to know where some of the recommendations came. So which reports do they fall under? And also, like, I am, I am assured, I, well, I wonder, like Barry Goldson and Professor um, Herdwick's, their recommendations, have they fed into this policy, doc, this recommendation document as well? Have we used the good bits out of it? Um, I suppose if you could answer some of that. You're speaking of, thank you very much, thank you. Uh, Deputy, just to be clear of your, your question. You're speaking about the recommendations in relation to the implementation group. Is that what you're referring to yes, and you're wondering um, where? Yeah, the response to the operational review recommendations 2017. Uh huh. And it is the care as part of as part well, of this the is overall the overall review of Oberstown since um, August 2016. Since we had the major incidents that took place about in Oberstown, so I assume, or I am wondering, that basically the, it's called the Oberstown Children's Detention Campus response to the board's management to recommendations of the operational review, which was launched by the Oberstown themselves in July 2017. Yeah, so I'm just wondering, and it's signed off by the chair of the board. So I'm just trying to figure out the various lots of recommendations are in there, along with the commentary. So uh, is your there's question... recommendations and there's comments. Okay. okay? And basically, what yeah. I'm trying to understand from the operational review, it says operational review, recommendations, and comments. What I'm trying to figure out. Who made the recommendations? From what part of the reviews fed into this? Comments I know come from the board, but who fed into the recommendations? And I think it's a fair point because I, 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 I okay, the, and I'm so sorry because I'm trying to. I don't have the document specifically that you're speaking I about appreciate in that. front of me. But my understanding of what you're asking then is that if there were recommendations <laughs> from the operational review or any other of the of, of the other reviews that have gone on, recommendations there. But we're speaking specifically about the operational review. You're referring to a document there where the board responds to hmm. the recommendations of the operational review. Is that what well, you're? Is that what you're referring the, yes, to? Yes, that's exactly the document. Uh -huh. But they produced the doc re document because this is actually what the board, the board did. Yeah. So this is That's their Bible. Do. This yeah. is the Bible where when you go out and you visit, you can see X, Y and Z is being ticked off. Mm -hmm. Now, I am sure the culture and the atmosphere <clears throat> is also part of there. But this is what is their Bible to say we're making um, progress, be it to the Youth Justice Department, to the DCYA or whoever. This is their Bible of saying this is what we found at the time and we're working off and I'm trying to just unpack behind it who fed into it what recommendation came from where sorry is that okay Chair? Yes. Sorry. I 
think they are, uh, as I understand it, they're all from the operational review. Um, uh, and, and exactly, they're all from the operational review. Um, is that your question? Yes, but I, what I'm trying to understand as well is what, where, yeah. where they came from. Like, yes, they're all part of the operational review. So you don't have the document, the, is that what yeah, you're implying? So who, who came from the external? independent review team, uh -huh. who, were some of them used from HICWA, were some of them used from their own um, procedures themselves? No, they, they, uh, they, they were from the reviewers. They were from the reviewers. All they were them. from the reviewers, yes. They, they, um, not the external reviewers, the internal reviewers that you appointed in March 2017. The, the two reviewers that we're speaking about in terms Which of the operational. Which is Barry Goldson yes. and so they were all from, all right. Well, it, it, so just to be, in an attempt yes. to be helpful, Deputy Rector, yeah. I mean, the report, and, and you read out yes. the name of it, I have it here, yes. it, recommendations of the operational the review. But All that, right, yes. that's okay. okay. That's, that's the only operational mm -hmm. review carried out. So. All right. So, so that, that all came from their report. All right, that, that's, that's very helpful, actually, okay. to be quite honest with you, because it gives us an understanding then. To, to me, it gives me a, a complete understanding as to what they had highlighted within it. Yes. So, okay. And I suppose it, I could still go back to point four on it, recommendation four, about no females. Yes, we have allocated in Oprahstown um, Detention Centre six places for females within it. So can I ask the question then, what are we doing to address that? Okay, that, is a, that, is a, uh, that was a recommendation of the reviewers. That's their view. That's their opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, they're, I, I, sorry. They're, uh, and the there is, and all I'm just wondering is, what, what are we doing in relation to that? Are we addressing that? There, 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 uh, there is a separate facility for girls. There's a separate facility for girls. And they, uh, there is a girl uh, in, in, in I, I met her when I was out there recently, and she, there's one, one girl there at the moment. The, the opinion, that is the view of the reviewers in terms of their recommendation, obviously, and in terms of the board, um, and in terms of the policy, is that we have a place for girls there. That's their, that's their, that's their view. Um, children's, the Children's Act provides that all young people, male, male and female, uh, uh, can have a remand and committal in relation to the detention centre. But, but what does it mean? Do you understand, or I don't mean it like that, Minister, what I'm trying to say here is, like, when it says no longer have girls there, what did, what did it mean okay. by that? It's, uh, it's, um, I think this has to do with an issue in relation to... I think I mentioned both here as well as in the doll that yeah. it's, it moves a little, it moves outside the terms of reference in relation to the review. All right. That's a policy oh, no. issue that All right. was already right. decided and I've, I indicated what that policy is. Males and females. All right. Okay, Chair. Sure. You finished? Okay. No, no, I'm not. I just want to also. Yeah. I appreciate it. Go ahead. All right. When we talk about the HICWA report, and you referenced it there in your opening statement, mm -hmm. and, and I've read the HICWA report in great detail, and I have pages upon pages of my own little post its on it. But there was one that glared out at me percentage of staff with up to date training from 2017 inspection to 2018 had actually dipped. And I talk about the dip was in relation to child protection and safeguarding. In the, the 2017 inspection, it had 88% were trained, and the inspection as of March 2018, only 63% had trained. In relation to first aid, in March 2017, 48% had trained, and in March 2018, 28% had trained. Um, is there a reasoning behind the dip in, in the training and in the safeguarding okay. for, for staff? Yeah. Well, um, although I, I appreciate... Um uh, the question. Uh, uh, my understanding is that there's a very uh, comprehensive action plan that was agreed between HICWA and the Oberstown management, and it outlines the range of issues uh, that were raised, which will be addressed following an agreed time scale to improve the day-to-day -day operations. And many of these have been put in place. And as you know, that's the usual, that's a, uh, an important uh, um, uh, process of good practice that mm. recommendations are made. Um, it's not um, uh, in light of improvements that would be required, and that's the job of HICWA, and an action plan has been put in place. And that's what's, that's what's happening. With the height of respect, but 
We're talking about young people here, but we're talking about child protection and safeguarding. Like, would it not be, would that be not one of the ones you would want to have, certainly at 100 percent, as opposed, you know? Of would, course. My understanding too is that my, uh, um, uh, my time before you today here is particularly specifically in relation to the operational review and in relation to the HICO questions that you're asking. I'm, I am indicating that they put forward that report. I'm, I'm raised, I raised the report because they had sight of the full, of the full operational review, which is what we're here to discuss uh, this, this afternoon. Um, uh, but that as, as, uh, as, as, as is usual in terms of their inspection and having also looked at uh, the operational review is that they've identified the action plan and that uh, the, and have agreed a time frame in relation to that. And I think that's, uh, and, and, I suppose, and I believe that that's happening. And I suppose that's why I went and looked at the HICWA report because uh -huh. they had sight of that, yes. whereas I don't have sight of that. So I yes. have to use that as my Bible yes. at the moment to make a fair I assessment of that. that. Is that okay? Thank uh -huh. you. Okay, thank you. Just to clarify before I invite Deputy Chambers, to, did, uh, Deputy Rabbit has just, or maybe I mis mistook what she said. HICWA, have HICWA seen? The yes. 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 I've said that. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Forgive me. I, yes. I thought it's I missed. Okay. Yes. Deputy. It was offered to Hikwa by the chair. Okay. Deputy Chambers, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Minister. Thank you for your statement. Um, I, I would share the concerns of other members here about the report not being published because one has to ask the question: What's the purpose of commissioning a report if it's never seen by the public? And it, it's in the interest of transparency that people are seeking to see the entirety of the report and. The very fact that not even a redacted version was made available, uh, given that the authors were willing to redact anything that was seen as sensitive or unfair, um, that they weren't taken up on that offer. Uh, Minister, one of the points made by the two professors is that because the report was not published, we do not believe the right lessons will be learnt by the many individuals and organisations that have had some involvement in the campus, unless there's a full understanding of what happened in the past. And I'm just wondering what your view is on that. If, if we don't publish the report and really delve into what happened and all of the details, how then do we learn the lessons from what happened in the past? Uh, that's the purpose of conducting a report in the first place, I, I would have thought. In, in terms of the legal advice, Minister, have you seen the legal advice, not, not the advice that you would have obtained from the Attorney General, but the legal advice that was made available to the Board? You've, you've seen that. And was that legal advice made available to the authors of the report to explain to them why their report did not meet with that legal advice? Uh, first of all, sorry, is that, are you finished, Deputy? Okay, ahead, first yeah. of all, in relation to your point about fairness, I think I've answered that question. Um, you, you, you make the point that uh, it's not if the report is done, public should see it, that's in the interest of fairness. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I did, I did say in my opening statement that was the intention and the hope of the board as well as myself. Mm -hmm. um, I have indicated that uh, in terms of the legal advice as well as the experience uh, of the board, of the staff, my own officials, that fair procedures weren't followed. Uh, therefore, um, there is a lack of fairness there, which leads to the legal risks, which is why there is not a publication. So, I, I, whereas I respect your, uh, you know, the, the, that you've raised that issue again in terms of fairness, I think I've already. I think I've already uh, answered that question. Um, learning lessons from the past, absolutely. And again, may I say that it is a, a great disappointment to me, and I think to the board as well, that, that this report isn't able to be published for the reasons that I've outlined. That is not to say, however, that lessons are not being learned, and they have been learned, and I've indicated um, of all the ways in which that is the case uh, from the perspective of both the recommendations being published, um, the uh, pulling together of those recommendations with recommendations from a number of other reviews, uh, the HICWA report, the HICWA inspection, the action plan that's come about as a result of that, and those are the basis of the lessons being learned from the past. I have not seen the legal advice that was given to um, uh, 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 was, was, uh, that was given to Oberstown. The legal advice was, Oberstown legal advice was made available to the Attorney General. Um, and then you also, sorry, you, did you ask one other question, Deputy? Yeah, I asked uh, why a redacted version of the report wasn't published. Mm -hmm. and uh, just in, in, the, in the view of, of the board um, is that, uh, uh, I think the extent of, exactly. It, again, considered that regrettably um, it, it wouldn't serve um, a meaningful purpose. Um, 
Because the board. I'm advised that the board considered that there were serious flaws that couldn't be remedied at the stage that the redaction of the report was not feasible to the, due to the extent of the redactions that would be required, and that's the answer. Okay. The chamber is just uh, sorry. I think it's a relevant question. I don't think the minister has asked you. You actually asked what it, had the legal advice been provided to the authors. No, no, it has not been. Yes, it just, I mean, just in relation, I mean, if you are satisfied, given that you haven't seen the legal advice, we can only assume that there were suggestions that you, have or you haven't seen. I have seen my own legal advice from the, from the Attorney, Attorney General. General. And, and I, I, uh, the Attorney General saw the legal advice from Overstone. Okay, so okay. The, the AG's advice is based on legal advice from somewhere else that nobody has seen, which is not satisfactory. And there's no reason that legal advice cannot be published because it's not the AG's advice. So there's nothing precluding you from publishing that legal advice or seeking that it be published so that we can all make an assessment as to whether the correct call was made. And, you know, in terms of... Um, your question, but... in, in terms of the, 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 the suggestion, that you, you appear to be satisfied that fair procedures were not followed. I can only assume that there was the threat of perhaps defamation proceedings from staff. I don't know. We don't, we don't know what was threatened. And it appears, I mean, Deputy Mitchell asked a very good question. Do you believe that non-publication serves the interests of children? You said yes. Um, can you explain how you can say that? Because you're, on one hand, saying you're very disappointed that we can't publish and that you want to publish and that the reason we're not publishing is because of legal threats from people that were named or dealt with in the report. That's not the children. That's clearly other persons. So just how can you say that it's in the interest of children not to publish? And then just in relation to um, the issue of there not being fair procedures followed, if fair procedures are not followed, that means, and I know this has been rejected by the authors, should we not start again? Should we not have another review? If it wasn't done properly the first time, surely we just don't sit back and say, well, oh well, that wasn't done correctly the first time, we'll just accept that. Um, the whole purpose of a review and a report is that we get an opportunity as elected representatives to scrutinise that report, uh, given that it's a very serious issue. This was referred, this all came about because of the UN Committee on, on Anti-Torture and the fact that children were being detained individually. Very, very serious allegations. So I'm not actually surprised that there were some individuals that really didn't want this report published. That doesn't really come as any major surprise. But it is, I mean, if it's the case that it wasn't done properly the first time round, are we supposed to just say, that's, that's it then? Or should we not try and do this a second time and do it properly with a report that can then be published and properly scrutinised? Because I share your disappointment, Minister, and I don't think it's satisfactory to just say, oh, well, that's it, that's it then. I'm not saying that, Deputy. I am not saying that in terms of all of the answers that I've given, as well as my answers in the doll. So I, I don't accept that as a conclusion in terms of what you've just said. Should we do it again? Mm. Um, I think the point is, as I've, I guess, also indicated, um, um, there are ongoing reviews and inspections of what goes on in terms of Oberstown. We have a HICWA inspection that happens subsequent to that review. So if your concern and your interest is, is there ongoing monitoring, inspection, assessment, evaluation? Yes, it is. It is. So um, that, I think, is the uh, overall objective, uh, and I am satisfied that that's the case. Do I think, it, uh, in, terms of, in terms of the interests of children, why do I say that, yes, I think that's served at this stage um, in terms of the non-publication of the report? Uh, um, I think that if there are legal risks, and that is the advice, and I, uh, I accept that advice, that there are legal risks, and in relation to those legal risks, uh, that the, the, the content of the material is such that is it, that it is it is not it is not um, it is not a, it would not be a good thing uh, for that for that to be published. Um, uh, and um, the importance in terms of what goes on in terms of Oberstown is to ensure and to support an environment that is conducive for the care of the children, uh, which, is, which is supported by uh, ongoing good working relations between both the staff as well as the management between the staff and the children. And it is my assessment uh, that uh, th in order to ensure that that's, that the stability that I've, 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 I've identified here, that I've witnessed myself, the incredible improvements that have gone on, that I, I, I think that if there are legal risks in terms of a publication, that that potentially could disrupt that. And I, 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 don't, want to, I don't want to have that happen. 
Yeah, and I mean, I, I accept what you say. In, in, in fairness to you, Minister, you didn't conduct the report. Um, you haven't complained about it being unfair. And you are relying on, on legal advice from the Attorney General based on legal advice from another legal firm. So I, I fully accept your bona fides in relation to this. And I can understand the, the difficulty that you're in. You're defending a piece of work that you didn't carry out. But ultimately, we're here now in a situation where, yes, HICWA will consistently review the operation of the facility, and we will always look to make improvements. And the focus of every member here is to ensure that the children are looked after and cared for, and that the infringements on human rights that we've witnessed and that we know happened never happen again. But we have a specific report that was commissioned on the back of a UN committee identifying serious breaches. Um, and th I think 3,000 incidences of single separation in one year, which is incredible, really. It, it's, it's just such a large number. And it, I suppose, what is the purpose of the report if we don't get to, to read it? And if, if, it was con if it was done in such a in such a poor way, as has been alleged by some, that, a, that fair procedures were not followed, my final question is, do we need to conduct that report again, uh, following the fair procedures that are necessary in order to facilitate publication so that we can then read it uh, and assess it? Okay. Otherwise, I'm not really sure why it was done in the first place. Well, thank you, Deputy. I think I've answered that question. I don't have anything more. You've already asked the question. I have answered the question. I don't have anything more to add to your asking the question again. So, sorry, the, just the, specifically on the second... You want your, your question about in terms of whether we need to do it again. Do you think I we just need to draw a line under the sand and move on? Or sorry? Do we just I need answered, to draw a line or move I on? I answered or? the question. I'm sorry, just to, I'm, I'm not being difficult. I actually didn't understand that you've answered that specific question. Are you suggesting that... I, um, okay, this, this, this process... I said we have had subsequent reviews and inspections... By in terms of the Yes. 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 But I suppose my point and is... the point of those are to improve the practice in terms of what goes on at Overstone, which I is what's going on. I fully agree with you so and accept that. So that is my that. answer. So why would we ask for another review to be conducted right now? So what was the purpose of the review that we can't see now then? If HICWA were sufficient, why did we bring in these two professors to do the review? I don't have anything more to add to what I've already... I, I don't have any... I think I've answered those questions a couple of times. Yeah. Well, just before I let Deputy Chair look in, I just, just want to see clarification in regard to your opening statement, Minister, in regard to the um, information provided to your department by the Attorney General. It, you say on page 11 of your opening statement, having been advised by the Board of their decision, I then sought the advice of the Attorney General. In light of the risk based on the legal advice received, I gave a matter of careful consideration and, and said that it was inappropriate to publish the report yes. for words to that effect. It doesn't actually allude to whether the, the, the Attorney General was basing his advice to, to you on legal advice or the actual report. So did the Attorney General read the report? Uh, I yes, I, I received advice from the Attorney General on the basis, yes. So the Attorney well, I'm reviewed presuming he read the, the report, report rather the than report just the legal advice? Because yes. I, I know I can't the Deputy has, has questioned that and I think it's a relevant it's not, question. It's, sorry, it's not based just simply on the other advice. Okay, Is that so your question? That's just yeah. for clarity, That's Deputy, so that might be helpful to you. Yeah, because I, I think, I, I'm not sure the Minister understood your question, but yeah. I just think okay, it's pertinent okay, to you. Deputy Sherlock, please. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I, look, I, I, I'm trying to give the Minister a fair hearing in terms of what I'm listening to today, and I'm trying to look at this issue uh, from the perspective of somebody who's, you know, coming to the issue uh, quite, you know, in a cold way, if you will, in a rational way. And, you know, my, my initial assessment of the Minister's response is such that, if I understand her correctly, that there are a set of recommendations arising from the operational review which are being put in place, which are being enacted, if you will, which are the, the recommendations, the substantive recommendations, but that there is a report which is underpinning those recommendations which the Minister will not publish. Am I correct in that assessment? That I have decided, yes, that okay. is correct. For okay. the reasons stated, obviously, Deputy. No, yeah, and I want yeah. to... Okay. tease out the reasons if I may. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, we're all now in receipt of most of the FOI information yeah. uh, based on the work mm -hmm. of Justin McCarthy and RT. So you'll be aware that we have the correspondence. I'm in receipt of correspondence now dated 17th of the 11th, 2017. So bearing in mind that the report, as I understand it, was, was received in 
February 2017, February 2017, and by February 2019 will be a full two years since the report was received. I have correspondence here between, uh, and, and if I, if I, I don't want to, I'm, I'm very reluctant to name anybody, but there is a senior person within the department and there is a chairperson of the board. I make no value judgments about anybody, sure. but Sorry. what I am speaking to here is the content of the correspondence, and it's 1527, 17 to the 11. The board's view is from the board to the department. The board's view remains that it is not legally safe to place the report in the public domain and in this regard it can see no basis for deviating from this position or distinguishing between different types of publication. The legal risks uh, apply regardless. Okay? Now the word safe, it's, it's not legally safe is used there. Uh, I understand the, the, some of the reasoning behind that uh, because it can be interpreted that if you give it to uh, X number of stakeholders, it can be deemed to be legally published, if you will, in, in that regard. But what I am confused about and what worries me slightly is that the Minister's own submission to, to us here also states that when I, and I quote, when I, last, when I was last here I advised the committee that the Board of Management of Oberstone had decided that it was not safe to publish the report of that review. This decision was based on a careful and lengthy process of deliberation, including the commissioning of independent legal advice. So, my question is, if the board has its own independent legal advice, the minister has the advice, presumably, of the Attorney General. And I, I just need to break it down for myself in very simple terms. Yeah. Is there a conflict, then, between the Attorney General's advice in respect of whether or not the minister could safely publish the report and the board's own independent legal advice? Well, may I answer it this way, and thank you for that, and to laying it out. Um, the, um, both sets of legal advice said that there would be legal risks for the publication. Now, in my understanding, or in my uses of the language, um, uh, a legal risk is, would be effectively synonymous with saying it's not safe. So. Okay. So, w was, the minister, was the minister mindful to publish the report? I would have wanted to publish the report in the same way as the board wanted to publish the report. Uh, my intention I, was hoping, see, hoping I, I that I could publish the report. Yes. With, with, is that what's with the greatest of respect to you, Minister. Sure. Um, if the Attorney General's report uh -huh. is saying, perhaps on more than one occasion, that there is no impediment to the publication of the report, then it is logical in, in my mind, from my mind's eye, it is logical then that the Minister w of the day would deem it safe then to publish the report. What are the risks? Like, was there clear advice from the Attorney General in respect of the publication of the report? Did the Attorney General hedge? And I know, I, I, I'm mindful of the fact also, Chair, that you're not going to go into the detail of the, the content of the Attorney General's advice. But I think it would be very helpful here if we had a sense from the Minister that it was her intention to, uh, to, to, to uh, publish and that there was... Yes, there's always a risk. You can, like, risk can be measured. You can put risk into any process, but that there doesn't appear to be, prima facie, any case against the publication of the report from the government's point of view, not from the independent legal advisor's point of view. And, and maybe arising from that, to give the Minister's officials some time, like the, the, the next question then is whether or not there is a statutory entitlement on the part of the board, you know, not to publish. So, excuse me, may I just first ask, Please. answer the, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, apologies, Deputy, but just to be clear because you're, you know, very specific in relation to that. Um, 
F following, you know, uh, I mean, I think I already answered. It was it was my hope that that it could be published. But following the uh, Attorney General's advice, um, you know, the the department asked Oberstown to suggest, um, um, uh, you know, that mechanisms uh, to establish fair procedures. Um, um, uh, you know, that if 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 the, to ask Oberstown to establish that that fair procedures had been applied. And, and Oberstown then comes as effectively given me its own view as well as their legal advice that that was not the case. You see, I, I, I frankly, I, I don't understand that. Okay. Like, I, and I'm not a lawyer, so yes. you know, from a, a layman's perspective, um, I, I'm looking at this from the point of view, purely from the perspective of saying that so many stakeholders have had access to this report, and the the, the last person standing. Excuse me, who is that when you say so many stakeholders? Well, well okay. did HICWA not have access to the report? Oh, okay, that's one. Okay. Well, I mean, it is the HICWA. Okay. Did yeah. the Department of Justice have access to the report? No? I don't, I don't uh, no, think so. Okay, well, there, there are so. a number of stakeholders. Department. Your department has had access. There are a number of stakeholders and who HICWA. have had access, and they're the only two who, who have had access to the report. Okay, yes. so... so what do you mean then by fair procedure? And spell that out in very simple terms, please. Okay. Thank you. I will. I'd be happy to, to do that again. Um, yeah. um, the report was written. Conclusions and observations made. Observations made. I've already indicated and I've given an example of that in light of Deputy Rabbit's question about observations made that were outside of the terms of reference going into the policy issues. Um, um, the, it's written, observations, conclusions, recommendations, and at that point, that is not <coughs> provided to Oberstown uh, in order for people to review who may be named or whatever, both the campus itself, both the campus itself as an institution. That's the point, isn't it? Yeah. Named individuals. Yeah. There okay. are named individuals in the report, Minister, is there? Who, on, on the, in the Golds and Hardwick report, are there specific names who it is felt are entitled to fair procedure? And that, is that the reason then why the report is not being What published? I will say is that that was not given to the campus, to those and all, that they, they, they interviewed a number of people <coughs> that it was not, there was no um, um, uh, opportunity for right of reply in relation to what was written before the, it, there was a finalization of the report. Okay. So you're saying the, the process of the report... That's what fair procedure means. You asked me for the... Uh, no, to, I appreciate to, that. Is that yeah. Does no, that I appreciate uh, that, and it? I just want to clarify then that okay. I understand it correctly. Um, that... Are you saying that the process, that there was a flaw in the process, in, not a flaw in the process, but that the process was imperfect to the point of saying that there was nothing built in to allow for uh, persons possibly named in the report to have, you know, due process, if you will, uh, in terms of uh, entitlement to a good name, for instance, if you were using the law of tort, for instance. I'm, I'm just not hearing that question differently than what you've already asked me, Deputy, that I've responded to. So do you want to okay, we'll look that again? To, uh, to be helpful again to the <coughs> Minister, again, there's correspondence, um, yeah. you know, um, from senior officials, okay? And okay. again, this is the 13th of the 11th, 2017, 1653. You know, it, it, the Department is of the view that the following are mechanisms to progress matters in order to ensure that the matters you have raised are addressed, and that is the, the board and okay. principal sure. people within the sure. board. Uh -huh. One, a response to the authors of the report <coughs> pointing out that the existence of concerns about fair procedures and suggesting a further process of engagement with staff and management of Oberstown in order to ensure that persons criticised in the report have been fairly heard, or in the alternative to a submission by the board and management of Oberstown campus on behalf of those persons criticised in the report to be disclosed to HICWA and the Joint Oireachtas Committee, along with the report itself. 
Minister. And, and we wish to arrange a meeting between you and the Department to discuss the above as the Minister is before the JOC on the 22nd of November. Now, I, if I recall, oh, these issues didn't arise at that meeting, but you did anticipate that these issues would arise. They are arising now. I, like, what we're very strident upon, and I think what you're seeing here is unity across the membership of the committee in respect of the fact that I wouldn't be doing my job if I went out of here sure. with questions on my mind about the content of a report from eminent sure. people like Professors Goldson and Hardwick, that if, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but is, yes. is there some sort of a cover-up going on in relation to practices at Oberstown that we need to hear about in the public interest and are people being protect, protected unduly and the conflict I have in my own mind is that you must almost you know, make, take steps to protect somebody's good name and due process but also there's the public interest here and notwithstanding the fact that the recommendations are being implemented, notwithstanding the fact that HICWA is in Oberstown now and there's a clear pathway in terms of the improvements that are being made we still have the sword of Damocles of this report hanging over our heads as, a, as an Oireachtas committee and you know, I don't think we'll be satisfied until we get clearer answers in relation to its publication. I don't think the public will be satisfied unless it's published the clear answers would be what? The clear answers would be that, like, well, what is the level of risk uh, inherent in the Attorney General's advices to you? And I think there was possibly more than one advice, and perhaps you could clarify that. There might have been more than one engagement with the AG's office. I don't think the AG, but, frankly, okay. say, said to the Minister of the day, no, it is our advice not to publish this report. Okay. Um, that the minister had. Uh, you has have to the, do your job. You have to do your job, deputy, and I'm doing my job. And, your and I come at this from the point of view of being respectful adhered, of the minister's position as well, chair. Fair you, procedures would no, were not adhered to. Oberstown has advised, for example, persons mentioned were not given an opportunity to respond to the reviewer's findings. Okay, so have they responded since? And I, I asked that question specifically in relation to whether or not the process of the publication has of the report. Has responded since? The, the persons named in the report, have they had a chance, the persons criticised or entities criticised or practices criticised in the report, have they had a chance to respond the, to... The, the reviewers did not go back, did not go back to ask, to hear what they had to say and to be open to listening to that process and to revise their report. As were, that were they is what invited I understand. Back? I want to Sorry? have a second round, Deputy. Yes. Yes. Just okay. in fairness, I, yeah, I, I appreciate Deputy that. Sherlock, or uh, excuse me, Rabbit has indicated she wishes to come back in, so I, I wish to make a contribution. Deputy Neville may wish to make a contribution, then we'll come back to another round. But, Minister, if, if you feel there's anything to add to the last point made by Deputy Sherlock, or. Which is, sorry, what was the last point? Were they invited back? Was there a process designed? This is why I'm talking about the process, Chair. It's like, the initial was question the process, I asked myself. Was the process designed in such a way were, that if findings were made against persons or the entity, that there was a right to asked, reply? Yes, they were asked to have, they were asked to be, to provide the report to the people before there was a final report. And they That's did not I'm do saying. that? Um, Oberstown, envisaged that the visit, Oberstown envisaged that the visit would take place before the reviewers had finalized the report. That was in the terms of reference, so that any comments could be taken into account in the final version of the report. However, the reviewers maintained that it would not be possible to provide feedback until the final report had been completed. So the final report was Is that's what you want published? They consider that to be final. The reviewers okay. consider it to be final. And in fairness, okay. the Minister did actually allude to that response at my yes. initial question. I think it's a bit that. clearer now, yeah. though, to be Can I, may I ask? I think I said that earlier, Deputy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in, 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 in fairness, uh, I, I'm not to yes, cast expressions on anybody, but I, that, okay. that, that was what I gleaned earlier. But okay. Fair enough. Thank you. I mean, look, my point um, in, regard, in relation to this, and as, as the committee chair, sure. I, I feel you know there is a question as to this document, given it has been shared to the Department of Children and Youth Affairs, the Board of Oberstown, uh, uh, HICWA, and the Attorney General. And of course yourself, but four, four institutions um, and, its, and its relevant heads. And as a, as a, a committee responsible for um, scrutiny of governance, um, budget, etc., etc., does the minister believe uh, that uh, even an overview of this document 
should have been provided to this committee, even in a confidential uh, set of circumstances. An overview. Well, I mean, either the full document or or the uh, an, an engagement with the board of Oberstown in order to to flesh out the views well, of the members of the board and this you. committee. I think that's still open to you if you wish to do that. I see. Yeah. Okay. Um, my only other then question then in the. Subsequent reviews, obviously, Minister, you, you spent some time at the beginning of your contribution in your opening okay. statement referring to the fact that PICWA has provided relatively positive, albeit with some issue remaining, relatively positive mm -hmm. reports on Oberstan's progress since the incidents of 2016 in particular and has shown a clear pathway to uh, improving the standards right. by which it operates and, of course, following my own visit, um, not that not that long ago, um, certainly some of the security changes that were made to the facility made it an, an awful lot more um, user friendly, shall we say, in terms of a, of a secure environment. Um, because the emphasis, as you rightly pointed out in your opening statement, is that the facility is not a prison, um, and it is an environment in which uh, these these children must be treated fairly. Um, so my my question then relates to would you as Minister for Children and Youth Affairs have confidence that the, recommend, the unpublished recommendations of the, of the reviewer's report have been taken into consideration by HICWA and have been followed through or followed up upon since this report uh, was provided to, the, to HICWA? Um, the, the recommendations were published from this report. The, so maybe I'm misunderstanding Some of you. the recommendations. Yes, the recommendations yeah. were published, but what I, I want yeah. to be confident that okay. you have confidence that HICWA has reviewed the reviewer's yes. report and have taken it into consideration as a, on an ongoing basis as they conduct their business. Okay, thank you. Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, I do. Um, Deputy Chambers referred to, on a couple of occasions, whether you felt there was um, a sufficient requirement at any point in the future t for a further review to take place, and you stated that it, you believe that HICWA were fulfilling that, and alluding mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. answer to your last question. Mm -hmm. um, my only observation would be, again, that if there are certain elements of this, rep of this unpublished report that have uh, gotten the attention certainly of the independent legal advice to the board of, of Oberstein and indeed the Attorney General's advice. Would, was any of that information or do you feel that any of that information contained within the report, uh, certainly the unpublished sections, um, or, or are there sections within the report that have not been subject to any recommendations by HICWA in particular? Just just before I... Well, I, I mean, I... Uh, well, what I would answer is, um, you know, uh, if I was to give an exactly, absolutely, specifically yes to that, I'd have to take a look at it again, you know. But just generally, yes, I believe that. You know, so I think you're asking me, is it word for word in terms of, is that what you're asking me? Yeah, yeah okay. Well, I, 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 what I will say is um, I believe that is the case, but if you wish me to go back and take a look and review all of that, I will as Minister. I, I you know, would, to be it, fair. I, you know, I think, and, you know, in the interest exactly, of the yeah. committee members and indeed yeah. the Oireachtas in general, I think yes. it will be beneficial to us, and perhaps sure. you could correspond with the, yes, the committee course. secretary I'd be happy, I'd be so happy that we could to provide do that. I, I, do, I, do, I do respect that. I, I think it is yeah. worthy. Uh, Minister, yeah. I've, I, I was looking while you were um, making responses to other members yes. as to the cost of the public, the okay. cost of this report. Yes. I, I, I was absent uh, last week, so I didn't get an opportunity to, to review that. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a, unable to find the answer in last week's parliamentary questions. Okay. Perhaps it was the week prior. Does anybody present have with you have that figure? And we'll if get you do, it to you. you. Please provide it. Okay, of course we will. It. Yes, um, that's fine. Okay, well. As I said, I think the only point that I can make as, as committee chair is that I do feel that committee members should, ha we have an oversight role as to the operation of Oberstown, as to the operation of the department, and I do feel that there, there should be a mechanism, if there isn't already, for such matters to be dealt with in a confidential matter. I do think it would mean that members present and members of the other members of the Oireachtas who have questioned this matter would feel a lot more confident. I mean, I think Deputy Sherlock in particular is perfectly entitled to ask the questions that he asked and 
you know, to leave this room without any further questions, and I suspect that is unlikely. Um, so I do think, uh, you know, that there should be a mechanism created, and I would ask that the department would 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 consider such matters in the future. Of course, of course, in thank these you. circumstances, I do accept the point that you've made yeah. that it is open to the members to ask the board of Overstown to make themselves available to us, and I think clearly. Absolutely. Without second guessing my colleagues, that's probably something that we, okay. they, they will seek in the new year. But thank you, Chair. May I just ask? I'm not sure what you were referring to in terms of Deputy Sherlock's questions. Deputy Sherlock referred to the fact that he could do it himself. I'm yeah. Sure when he comes back, but Deputy, Deputy Sherlock Sher 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 referred to the fact that he doesn't want to leave this room uh -huh. without with unanswered questions. And I suspect, given the look on his face, <laughs> he, may, <laughs> he, he well, may in fact leave the chamber without, okay. without, with, with questions unanswered. And okay. I, I just, I feel that perhaps there should be a mechanism rather okay, than you okay, having to enough. field exactly. constant questions and FOI requests and segments on RT radio and all of the rest of it that have taken place over the last number of months that if the committee members were provided with a rundown on this unpublished report, we would have avoided all of this. That would be my my sense of this. Okay, I, um, I, I hear and what therefore, you're I think saying, perhaps a mechanism should yeah, be put in place in I the future. Saying, okay. Should the, in the unlikely event that this yes. issue should arise. Yes. Um, but I, I, I suspect that the board, the members of this committee may request yeah. a, an audience with the with that's, the board of Overstep. That, that that's my my only remark. But I invite. Deputy Rabbit, for, sorry. Just maybe, did I misunderstand? I, I understood that the, um, the uh, my, my calendar said that this would go to half six. You said seven or hey, Forgive me, I was informed that you had to vacate the premises by seven. So I was operating on the assumption that we would go at seven. If you're saying half six. Well, I, and I really, this has nothing to do with the issue. At, first of all, like, we didn't sure. start till 5.15. Correct. Okay. So, um, uh, but I, I, I do have, you know, I mean, I will stay, I, I, but I, I do have another engagement, and I, I had I, my, my calendar said 6:30 and fi, five to 6:30. I, if it's not sufficient, we can do this again. I'm not, you know. The committee is. It's not. There isn't a closing time. I was just informed okay. that you needed to be off premises at set by seven. So. Go ahead. That, okay. Well, I'll ask deputies Rabbit, Sherlock, and brief. Chambers to. Well, sorry. Rabbit, Chambers and Sherlock to be brief then, if you could, and, okay. and Mitchell to be brief. Well, thank you. I, I'll, then I'll ask Deputy Mitchell to start because Deputy Mitchell first, be brief. first on the round. And uh, thanks again, Minister. But Minister, I just want to see the problem we have here is mm -hmm. the, uh, our in inability to scrutinise what led to the recommendations. I right. Understand. So we have these recommendations published, and we're sitting here reading them. And I just want to read a few of them, which just to get your perspective, right? There was one recommendation, um, recommendation 79, and it states that a young person's clothes should only be removed in exceptional circumstances authorised by the director and in a dignified alter and that and a dignified safe alternative should be provided in cases. So I need to know, in 2016 and up to this you know, report, was this happening? Or is this a change of policy? Yeah. And another one which has really caused alarm, and I think it caused a lot of us when we've seen these recommendations, it was recommendation 82, yeah. states that internal cavity searches of young people should never be undertaken unless authorised by a doctor for medical reasons. So you can understand why we're concerned. Was this happening? When did it happen? And, you know, is it still happening? Yeah, thank you, Deputy, and also I, I appreciate the, the comments of the Chair as well, and I think that it might help me to answer that. I mean, I, we, I came in here, um, you know, the, the questions are around um, uh, to publish the report. That's, that's, that's one thing. Then, you, you know, but if you move over here in terms of the context of your obligation, your responsibility as a committee to scrutinize, et cetera, as you've, as you've outlined very clearly, I, I accept that. You know, I think that it's um, that is different than, and maybe, as you say, maybe there is a mechanism that's different than putting out something into the public that has legal risks attached to it. And, and those are those have been my answers to your questions, uh, bringing us back to that on the basis of, as I understood, is that your belief that it should be in the public and published, which is different than 
um, your job to scrutinize a report and to ask questions in light of that. It's related to, but it is, so I do think in terms of some of your, 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 your questioning or wondering, is there, are there other mechanisms in order to ensure that the, uh, what is the basis of some of the recommendations that may fall, or comments or recommendations that may fall in the context of, um, that the actual terms of reference, that you're saying you need more information in that regard. So I, I hear what you're saying there. Yeah, I mean, I don't wish to, wish to take up yeah. uh, Deputy Mitchell's time, but I mean, just my observance of this is that we, we as members, of the yes. members of the Oireachtas, have spent an inordinate amount of time <coughs> addressing this issue as of the media, whereas it's disjointed. The, the, the process is disjointed because the report was provided to the board of Oberstan, and at that point legal advice was sought, which led to further legal advice from the attorney, which led to you making yeah. a decision, which all of us respect based upon that, uh, that uh, advice, but it doesn't undermine the fact that we have a job to do, you have a job to yeah. do, and until such time as we are able to scrutinise it in a reasonable fashion, without having been provided with a background as to those decisions, it leaves yeah. us all in a disjointed position where you're fielding questions in the Oireachtas um, and indeed at this committee. And I, I, just, I just think that the manner in which it's been approached, um, and I don't believe this is your fault, Minister, you know, um, it, it is somewhat yeah. disjointed. And, and therefore, okay. you know, deputies and, and senators have spent time sure. analysing this and have come up to the same conclusion. Which I that appreciate. If, yes. if perhaps if the board of Oberstan had been more, more forthcoming, in their dealings with uh, this committee, and it may have been, it may have avoided an awful lot of um, supposition um, and indeed uh, story uh, generating through the provision of, of, of freedom of information requests, which in themselves can often be disjointed and not casting any aspersions on anybody reading uh, FOI and putting it together. But the truth is, unless they have the whole story, they have none of the story, and that that, that would be my take on it. But um, Deputy Rabbit. Uh, if you could be brief, and then I'll, uh, Deputy Sherlock, okay. to conclude. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank, you. Um, Thank you. Minister, I will be brief, and Thank I'm going you. to go back again okay. to the questions I asked the last time. First, and one of the questions I'm going to ask is, um, the authors, Goldson and, and, and Hardwick, was there any of their recommendations not included in the overall recommendations that was part of the 95 recommendations? That's one of my questions. Okay. And... When I spoke the last time, I spoke that yes. the, the, the response of the Board of Management to the recommendation of the overall operational review 2017, it wasn't just from them. It was made up of five independent reviews. And the independent reviews that was made up of, it was the security, a review of security was completed in December 2016, two reviews in relation to health and safety in 2017, and the behaviour management was completed in July 2017. And then they conducted their field trip in October, November 2016. And it was when February 2017 came around, the Board of Management sought independent legal advice to clarify any legal risks associated with publishing the body of the report. The advice received by the board was that the risks were too great and so the board decided very regrettably that the body of the report could not be published. Withstanding that, 95 recommendations were published and what I really want to understand, and I go back to my initial question is, of those 95 recommendations, what leads to the, what came out with the security part of it? What was health and safety? What was their recommendations? What was the behavioural management part of it? I'm trying to unpack it. And you can appreciate where I'm coming I from, do. Minister. I do. So when I, and I want to put it in context, because when I look at recommendation number four, which is to do with girls, I want to know who put that in the body of the report, in what context was that recommendation made, and is, it a is the facility not good enough? I, I'm trying to really understand it from that. a female point of view. I do. Is that okay, that. Minister? It is. Okay. It is. In terms of your kind of initial questions of where did the different recommendations come in terms of the overall, exactly. I think I can get you that information. Thank I mean, you. Okay. That, that, that would be appreciated. And I, think, and I appreciate that you, you know, your, your desire to ask that question. So, um, 
you know, and again, I also uh, appreciate, and we've we, we did this already uh, in terms of that question, that you're wondering where is the point or what, what, what's un, what, what lies underneath Absolutely. the, uh, let's say, the recommendation in relation to no girls at Overstown. I think that's a, I, I understand that you have that question to make. My response initially was that it, it, that was something that went outside of the terms of reference mm -hmm. because it was about policy and policy is set by the department, the government, et cetera. And so in that sense, it's not appropriate. Um, or it wasn't. It went outside of the terms of reference of the report. Um, uh, in terms of why it was said, anyhow, is maybe that's exactly. what you're asking. In exactly. context, I appreciate that, that you have that question. I appreciate that. You and have will that I question. be able to get an answer to that, Minister? Well, I don't have the answer right now to, to offer to you, but I will go back uh, and see what what I will, yes. you know. I, and I think and that perhaps again, as as a result of what, in terms of what the chair said. It might, I'd be very happy to do that. It perhaps could be given more directly in relation to questioning and I the board. that's probably where I'm coming yeah, from. I with understand. My line of questioning with the 95 recommendations, I understand. what fed what? Yeah, I understand. Thank you, Deputy. Yeah. Yeah. Deputy Sherlock, please. Hi, Chair, um, again, I'm trying to reconcile in my own mind the, the, the interpretation of the minister and the department in respect of the, the status of the report. If, if, if there is a, uh, a respect for due procedures, then there is an entitlement, I would, uh, I would suggest, on the part of those who are the subject of the report to be able to, entitle, to, be, to be entitled to due process. Yeah. So, so I, I understand that now. Does that mean then that given that there was no further interaction between Mr. Professors uh, Goldson and Hardwick, that the report is arguably, notwithstanding the fact that you're implementing the recommendations or yeah. that Oberson Fair is implementing enough. the recommendations uh -huh. and HICWA is across that, that this report is still arguably, by your interpretation or the department's interpretation, not a full report but indeed a draft report, that it is incomplete in that sense, per the terms of reference. Um, may I ask, what is, why, why are you asking that question before Because I... already, yeah. and, and this is where the and, FOI in, yes. information, okay, and again fair, I yeah. refer to document okay. you know, 15 to the 8th, 2017-14, yes. uh -huh. I, I, I have a, a full set of the documents you know, through FOI, sure, sure. Uh, but the source is RTE, okay, quite sure. frankly, that's and fine. that's public domain stuff. But again, there's a letter between the department um, uh, and where it says, and I quote, there is confusion generally as to the status of the report, while the reviewers consider the report to be the final report. Yes. That was not necessarily the view of the department or yes. Overstone. Okay. okay. You see, yeah, okay. now if you I tell me, saying. Chair, if you tell me, Chair, or if the minister tells us, Chair, that, you know, there is a conflict between the reviewers and in terms of an understanding of what the status of the report is, well, then that does provide some clarity for us. But, okay. and the but is, yes, sir. is, again, I go back to the AG's advice, notwithstanding the advices in relation to risk, mm -hmm. the minister, as I understand it, still has full discretion based on those advices as to whether or not she wishes to publish the report. Mm -hmm. And it would be my view, and I'm only one member of this House, and, and I, 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 I note your comments earlier, Minister, in respect of the mandate of this committee, but we're all members of this House as well, and we, we, you know, we can speak to the public interest you know, and, and question anything at any time. Uh, notwithstanding the, the mandate of this committee, it would be my view that the minister should publish and as they say be damned and and let it all out there in the public domain a supplementary question to deputy sherlock's question and that minister. and that is well, I, I, does, I does the minister have the legal authority to to do that i think, would the uh, yeah. does the minister have the legal authority to publish a report yes, commissioned do. by yes. the board yeah, my of understanding does. Yes, I do. you do yes i do yes, yes. i i understand that that's your view, Deputy. I, I, I guess I've come to the committee that, that I, I don't agree with that on the basis of all that I've been saying. But I understand that it, that is your view. Um, and, you know, and... Um, 
I suggest, Chair, that we'd be revisiting this again. Well, you know, I think, uh, we're, I think, uh, I think we're, we might. Yeah, fair enough. Exactly. Thank you. Can I last one? And, uh, I do think. Oh, Deputy Neville, if I may. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. No, no. Okay. No, no. I suppose, Minister, at the end of the day, we we're talking about the report, but it, there was a young man. In, there has been sentenced over this, and I suppose we have to. Oh, oh, I can't. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, still Deputy. In, I have no in. desire to shut down in. the court. Well, it has been. I didn't. I wasn't aware that that man was not included yeah, legally. All right. So I don't think but, it's appropriate. If you don't mind. All right. Okay. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. I, again, it's not not really my call. It's it's a matter yes. for the house. Deputy, Deputy, I was, Deputy I was, I was delayed coming in. I was actually not in the so, chamber. No, okay. no, please. So I've been doing a lot of listening here, and I'm, I'm not going to further questions that have been asked already. Um, I assume we're revisiting this subject in the new year. I think that is yes. I would, I would propose yeah, that. We I, I, I think the members have made it very clear yeah. through the course of the last hour or so that and, that would be. And secondly, the case. obviously, just to I suppose to, to echo your sentiment that from where we're coming from as members, it's I'm not discounting what you're saying in relation to the recommendations and progress being made. I understand the spirit of what you're saying, mm. but what's happened here is that for us as members scrutinise this when we see discrepancies being highlighted and conflicting opinions mm -hmm. and maybe procedure that hasn't been followed to whether it's term of reference or not, I'm not saying it is or not because of all the legal applications here, it leaves us as a committee, I have reservations, I feel insecure about this and that's exactly where I'm coming, that's just from listening to everybody here and I come in late and that's what we're trying to put on the table and as Deputy Sherlock said here, like, I don't want to walk out this door and go well, did we miss this, or did we miss that, or should we have done this, or should we have done that? I have to take your word for it, Minister, and I respect what you're saying in relation to this, but that's the reservations we have here, in this, or I have in this committee as well. No, I mean, to, to give the Minister some food for thought, um, I didn't get into the statement that was issued by um, Barry Goldson on, I think it was November the where he, in the public domain, very clearly states that he gave the board and the various stakeholders every opportunity to engage with him in respect of the issues before they went to publication. So there, there seems yes. to be, on the face of it, a contradiction between the minister and the department's position yes. and the and the Goldson and Hardwick position in respect of this. And that's, these and are so questions the that question have to be answered. I think it's a very good question. And I do, Deputy and I thank you for answer. that. And I, I actually, I think Deputy Mitchell pointed that out earlier, is that, so then the question for, I suppose, the committee or, you know, together is how, how do we, how do we sort mm -hmm. that out? You know, well, what I mean, would your view be of, of well, the question that Deputy Sherlock has asked. You, you mean in terms of that they've they've given they've they've contradicted effectively yeah. the advice the understanding that I have uh, from the board. Well, well in terms they've of contradicted the procedures, that. well, I, they, I think in fairness, the conflict is, is clearly well, between the reviewers and the board. I yes, I, I, the minister is acting on advice, and I don't think if you have. A, but what would your view be on it, as Deputy Sherlock has asked? Of which 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 view of? View well, of well, I asked previously, you know, did that in terms of the fair procedures, mm -hmm. you know, did the reviewers go back? And my understanding from the minister's response was that no, they did not go that, back. That's correct. But they are saying, as per their statement, yes, that I, they offered every opportunity before coming to their final report for the individuals involved or for Oberstown to, to provide further details or clarifications of points that they had made. Is that a contradiction? So that's why I, it sounds a little bit like they're that, saying well, different Well, it things, seems to me, Minister, through the chair, that yes. perhaps the mechanism or the procedures operated by the reviewers was, was more robust than I had you know, than, than we had previously understood, or that, that the impression has been made here that it, it's less than robust. I, I would contend that they, you know, based on that statement, that Gold, Sun and Hardwick had been more than uh, comprehensive in respect of their interaction with Oberstone. I think this needs to be teased out further, Cahir. Yes, sir. Well, I, you know, and I really, I, re, I respect what you've said. Um, I, and I think in terms of, um, you know, in terms of the reviewers themselves, as I said, they're men with an international reputation. I have met them myself. Um, and I guess what I'm, I'm left with, uh, you know, what you, you've stated is what they've said. 
and the board has said something different. So let's, let's at least agree with that. So the question is, how is that resolved? And what, what um, we're, that's part of what we're trying to resolve here. Maybe there's another way to do, I don't, we're not resolving it. Um, Are you finished with the process? Sorry? Are you finished with this process, Minister, in terms of I am, Oberstone, uh, in terms of the report? Like, I'm I sorry, it, Chairman, I, well, I, I do realise I'm, 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 you know, no, no, taking home. Um, listen, taking, Deputy, no, no, no as I, you said, you, I, respect, uh, I respect your responsibilities. Um, like, it would appear on the face of it, based on Goldson and Hardwick, that everybody in Oberstown on the face of it, was given the right to reply, or was, you know, was allowed f due procedure, if you will. And, and, and I am certainly of the impression here, based on the Minister's interaction with us, that, that that is not her interpretation of events. And that's where the question lies in my mind. Back to you, Chair. <laughs> yeah, as I said, um, I have um, received, as you have, but I have received a lot of ongoing correspondence, communication um, with the board uh, in relation to this whole uh, uh, very unsatisfactory process from their perspective as well as it is from the others. Um, and on the basis of that, at this point, as I've said, I am not asking for its publication because of uh, the legal risks involved. I've, I've indicated that. Your question now is, um, has to do with the reviewers are saying they did offer those opportunities, whereas the board is saying they did not. They, they, did, they did not. To be it, and, and that, and that it is our view. You asked this question earlier. Is it a draft as distinct from the final report? I think one I could say, in the sense of what we're arguing here, that it is a draft. That it is. That it is not. If it, that it is. That it is ought to be a draft. Anyhow, in terms of because there ought to have had the opportunity, which doesn't my, seem. To my, Deputy my, point. my understanding Sorry. of this, and yeah, yeah. absolutely, Deputy yeah. Chambers made the point. I mean, if this document was provided to the board once and once only um well no i'm not going there actually where i was going was that you I mean to me a review of a report that is provided to its uh, to, to to its paymaster to those who requested it um it well it depends on the report i suppose but in this case because it was dealing with individuals it would occur to me that there would have been a to and fro and we now have a conflict we have the board saying there was and we have the author saying there was so, but I think it, it is something we'll have to revisit. But can I ask Deputy Rabbit to please No, it's just something to add into that. For today. Because there is obviously a legal aspect to it all, Minister. And I, I'm not going there. But what I'm saying is there, there's, there is trade unions, there's people speak, speaking up for adults. Who was speaking up for the child in relation to this review? Well, that's and our job, that's I think. where our job of the committee, yeah. and that's why we're pushing so hard on this because the voice of the child has to be heard through this report. Somewhere along the way, whether it's a redacted version or whatever, but throughout the whole afternoon's proceedings, we have spoke around it and around it, but we have to get back to the centre of this. It's the centre of protecting the child. Thank you, no, I, thank you, Deputy. Just on my own behalf, thank you, because I think that sums it up quite succinctly. Minister, do you wish to offer any final remarks? Um, I. I, I, I think um, that is also my interest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I thank the Minister. Um, on behalf of the committee, I'd like to thank you for your presentation and for dealing with the me members' questions uh, as comprehensively as you could, um, I think is probably appropriate. Um, the meeting of the Joint Committee is adjourned until Wednesday, the 16th of January at 9.30 a.m. Thank you very much. Thank you.